The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar. Uh, today we're going to be talking about K2 Abbott for SharePoint. Um, before we kick off, I just wanted to walk you through some basics of this webinar. Uh, we're using GoToWebinar today, and so if you have any questions, all attendees are going to be muted, so please check in the top right corner of your screen. You'll be able to pull out the GoToWebinar dashboard and enter any questions you have there, and we'll address them uh, for you. Without any further ado, I want to introduce uh, our presenter for today. Um, he is the Director of Solutions solution architects here at Infinity Infosystems. Uh, so I'm going to pass it over to Mike Hammond. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, I'm Mike Hammond. I'm your uh, driver for today, so sit back and relax. Uh, we're going to try and limit it to around 30 minutes to give you a little bit of time back, uh, but give you enough information and enough um, I, I think very cool and interesting things to, uh, to hopefully uh, uh, you get some value out of this. Um, so feel free to reach out to me on uh, any of the social channels here. Uh, I'm pretty active on all of them. Uh, if you have any questions uh, uh, after the session, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I've been with Infinity for six years, uh, and my role is, is to help understand what uh, challenges that you may be experiencing from a sales, marketing, and customer service perspective and then map those to our products and services, which is all around CRM, workflow, mobility, and collaboration. Um, so uh, as Matt had mentioned, uh, there is the panel on the right-hand side. So you can press this little uh, orange little arrow button, and it should collapse and expand uh, the little question box. And so if you have a question, feel free to type it in. And uh, I'll address those uh, towards the end of the session. Uh, and then make sure that when you type it in, you hit that send button. Okay? And if we don't get to your question, then we will certainly follow up with you because this will uh, save the questions um, at the uh, end of the session. So with that, let's jump into K2 Apit for SharePoint. And if you're not familiar with K2 or K2 Apit, it is really, uh, I think, the, a very powerful workflow engine. Uh, not only for SharePoint, but that's what K2Appit is. K2Appit specifically runs on SharePoint. And K2Appit is a subscription or hosted based server. Now the nice thing is it will work in the Office 365 platform. So whether your SharePoint is in online and in the cloud, it works there. But if you prefer to have your SharePoint on premise and or you already have it set up and configured, then you can still use K2 Appit for your on-premise SharePoint implementation. So it's really just a great way to get K2 smart forms and workflow, the power of that engine and that platform um, hosted on your SharePoint application regardless of online or on-premise. Okay. And so K2 is really around workflow forms, which we'll demonstrate both of those today. Uh, and it's all uh, centered around um, uh, connecting data from multiple systems. So today we're going to cover a little bit on the CRM side, a little bit on the SharePoint side, and a little bit of document management. You can kind of see how all of those interrelate. Okay, so as mentioned, this is a subscription-based service. Uh, but again, the nice thing is regardless of uh, your on-premise implementation, and, and that is not only just SharePoint, but you know, the, the power of the platform is we can connect to other databases, and that includes, you know, CRM, which I'll demonstrate today, but it can be your accounting systems, it can be custom proprietary systems, it can be your data warehouse, any number of applications, even including systems that have web services, can uh, be used to connect and combine data from these multiple systems. And then uh, it does run on the Office 365 platform, so it's already kind of there and baked in and plugged in. And I'll show you how you can kind of just enable that, if you will. Okay. But the beautiful thing is you can get up and running very quickly because there is no software to install, there's no service to install. If any of you are familiar with K2 uh, Black Pearl or K2 Smart Forms, you'll realize that uh, you know there's, there's a, a little bit of work uh, that you have to do to really get the system installed and configured and up and running correctly. So this really kind of removes all of that additional overhead of setting up all your own servers and, and configurations there. 
So what do you get with K2 Appit for SharePoint? Um, you get the Appit application uh, connected to SharePoint, and it is uh, running on the Azure platform behind the scenes, uh, and then you also get the Appit dev environment. So again, if you're familiar with K2 Black Pearl and Smart Forms, it's the same environment. It's just all hosted in SharePoint. That's the only big difference there. Okay. And then what's also nice is that it will work across multiple sites. So you can have any number of sites, and K2 app, it can be used to connect to those. It's just simply an app that's running in the SharePoint model. And an app is, is really more of a SharePoint 2013 paradigm, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but um, it, it does also work on SharePoint 2010. So that's it for the slides for the most part. Um, I do have some additional screenshots in here just so that uh, you'll have those for reference because you'll be able to download this presentation. But we're going to jump into the demo. And, and uh, before we do that, I'm just going to show you kind of what we're going to work through today. Um, and, and this is the, the high-level overview. And, and this is a common type of a workflow that probably many of you already experience in your organization. This one happens to be a document review process. And I'm going to use it in context of CRM, where I'm going to uh, drop in a document, let's say a contract, into an opportunity. And what that's going to do is that's going to kick off a K2 Appit workflow. And what that's then going to take that document and the information related to that document and it's going to expose that inside of SharePoint. So it's going to reach over to SharePoint, grab that information, and pull it into SharePoint. So that in this case, let's just say that, you know, and that's what this system is doing, it's going to take it, update the status in a field in CRM, and then push that into the reviewer's queue or work list that um, it will be responsible for making uh, reviews and approvals of those documents. And so if you think about it in context of maybe you're, you have a, a team that needs to review compliance on contracts, well, that team may not necessarily be full CRM users, and it might be just easier for them to have a SharePoint site and a work list, if you will, um, to just see all those inbound requests come into one central location and then um, manage those documents from SharePoint as opposed to um, uh, uh, CRM and SharePoint or and multiple different applications. That's really what we're going to do today. So there'll be just a little quick little review and approval process. And then I'll show you how that was modeled in K2 Appit. Okay. So with that, uh, I'm going to flip over to our actual demonstration site. And, and I'm going to do a preliminary setup here so you kind of understand how everything is configured. But you'll see that I'm in my Office 365 platform. Um, and then I have, you know, my CRM here, I have Power BI set up, I have SharePoint, all of that's already been set up and configured. So once I go to my K2 um, uh, site, or in this case I just set up a sub-site, I'm going to call it How to K2. This could be, um, you know, contract approval site. And you'll see over on the left-hand side, these are just different areas that I have in my little um, sub-site of SharePoint. And now how I get K2 installed is uh, we go to our, our content page. And then you'll see here it'll show you all the different applications. And this is that app model that we were talking about. And you can see here that I have Appit already installed. And so how you install it is um, you just simply uh, come in and select Add an App. And then what that will do is that will search through two different areas. If you're on-premise, it searches through your on-premise store, uh, but also it has a, a new SharePoint store. So uh, here I just did a quick little search for Appit, but you'll see that if I look for um, kind of all applications, these are all the different applications that are available for me to install in SharePoint. And so um, K2 is now out on the SharePoint store, and uh, you can go out and just do a quick little search for K2 or Appit, and then you'll see that it'll find that application, and then you can install it. So that's all I've done is within this SharePoint environment, I've gone in and I've installed Appit, and then I've done some configuration based upon a list in the CRM connection. Yeah. So in this case, uh, I, I kind of, I've already, I, I started it just to keep it simple. We're going to update and upload a document. Um, in the notes area, um, but this could just as easily be a standard activity that will kick off this process. So I could add a task to it, uh, any of those kinds of things. Uh, you can um, even just use the built-in SharePoint integration and drop a document into 
example, if I went over to the documents folder here and I wanted to upload a document there, that too could kick off the workflow. But I wanted to really show you the power of being able to integrate with these other applications. And so I uploaded the document. And now what that's going to do is you're going to see that that kicks off the workflow and, and because it might not have refreshed automatically, you'll see that it will automatically set the, the contract status um, to a pending stage. So um, K2 sees the document and, and it pulls just periodically and then it will grab that document, it will update the field. And um, if everything's working correctly, it should um, automatically. Uh, uh, didn't update that yet, but generally what it will do is uh, it, it'll set that to, to, to pending. Okay? So what happens though behind the scenes is if I go over to the workflow area, you'll see that it actually pulled in that document. So here, that was an earlier demonstration. And so um, it, it grabs the information out of SharePoint. And then right here within my workflow area, my work list, I can action this information from here. And I can do a number of things. So I can, for example, open up the form. Um, I can, this could be say hello or accept, reject, rework, things along those lines. Maybe I just need to ignore it for a little while. But I can also do things like um, release it and open that up into another um, work, work item or work list. I can snooze that for a little while. So maybe I've just got so much on my plate like right now that I just need to put it into sleep mode so it kind of goes away from my screen. And it's like an alarm, it'll pop back up and you can configure how often you want that to, um, to remind you that you've still got work list items. Uh, but you can also do things like redirect that. So again, maybe I'm just so busy that I can't get to it and I need one of my colleagues to do the review. And I can simply just redirect that document to some other person in the organization or to another work list, or to another team. And then I can also share that with other individuals. So a lot of capabilities right from within the application, but if we open up the form, what you'll see here is a combination of two types of forms. Uh, one is a standard SharePoint workflow form, and another is a smart form. So we've embedded kind of a standard form and a smart, um, uh, a smart form in the same page here. And so you'll see that based on the stats, we had, a, had a, um, uh, some rework required for this. This is the contract for the full opportunity that it pulled in. And in this case, let's just say maybe I went ahead and I opened up that document. I made some changes. You know, and, and we can do that just very simply. Here's what's also nice uh, about this is that uh, if, if, we, if we open up the document, um, we can do that right within SharePoint. And so we can um, use the built-in capabilities to edit those documents. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and say we're going to resubmit that for review. And then what that will do is that will kick off the next stage of the process. And so that's going to move that on through off of my plate and onto the next person's plate that's required in that workflow. Or it's going to notify individuals that uh, some additional information um, is available for review. Okay. So once we save that, then that should go back to our document here, and then um, we'll see that that moves that off of my work list. Okay? So because I actioned that item, it moved it out of my work list, pushed it on down to the workflow for the next page, and now I can start working on this piece. Okay? So uh, if I wanted to, again, let's just say that uh, uh, I, I want to take a quick um, view of that flow and see what it looks like behind the scenes. Here is what's kind of happening behind the scenes. So uh, here's where it sets the status to pending in CRM. It then goes to the review document stage, which we did. And then uh, depending on whether I say rework required, it's going to go down this path. And again, based on if it's in resubmit, it's going down this path. If I just say, you know what, we're done, it didn't pass criteria, we're going to cancel that. But if it was accepted, it's going to go in and set the status to accepted and then send an email notification. And I'll show you how you can then add additional paths to this workflow. And, and so far, on all of this has been done without a single line of code. And that's the beauty of the application. And now here's another powerful part of the application in that it's tracking what's happening from a workflow perspective. Right? So uh, if I have, if, if the documents that are in my queue are sitting in certain statuses, it's tracking how long those are sitting in those different stages. 
you can see here in this particular workflow, I've got a pending review stage, I've got a review document stage, a set status stage, a rework the document stage, and a resubmit stage. And you can see in this particular workflow, uh, there's a significant amount of time happening in rework. Okay. So that really gives you insight into your workflows of where are the bottlenecks. And that's important, right? We want to eliminate bottlenecks. We want to improve efficiency and effectiveness. We want to help people be more productive. And so that is where you really see how using a tool like SharePoint and CRM and K2 all together can really provide powerful capabilities in helping you understand where those bottlenecks are and either potentially addressing that or making the process more simple, uh, but also even giving people statuses of where are those things at in the current process. So I can drill into these details and you'll see that, oh, okay, it's in rework. Here's the kind of when it was started and when it was kicked off. Uh, and then I can even see who was involved in that status. So if there were multiple people here that had been involved in working that document, I would see all of them there. And I can see some additional data and like the details behind it. Yeah. So nice drill down capabilities within the application. So then once we've gone through and, and, and approved that document, and we kind of, kind of, can kind of do the same thing here. Uh, if I didn't want to open up the document, I just want to say, you know what, I want to action that item. So we're going to just, boom, action the item. So that could have been an approve instead of a say hello. And now you'll see that because I actioned that, it looks good. I reviewed it, boom, it moved it off my, my uh, workbook. Okay. So very quick and easy to do. Now, the other thing that it does behind the scenes is it will move those documents into other um, document folders and other areas. So this is kind of how it works through the process of uh, taking a document out of CRM, putting it into SharePoint, and then in this case putting it into the documents to review and approve uh, list. So it's K2 that's moving all of the, um, the, the files, and this can be multiple files that it will move through that process. It can also even, and I think this is even uh, you know, a, just, uh, an amazing piece of um, capability, it can peer inside the document. And so we can see statuses and information based upon things that are actually being updated inside the document. So it doesn't have to just happen in the list or in CRM. You could have, for example, it look at a keyword or a, um, uh, uh, any type of information inside of the document itself to then trigger additional workflow. So then um, once that's all kind of gone through the process there, then uh, what we should see is if we um, go back to our um, uh, uh, CRM, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, finish that off, and go back to our CRM application, you'll see that now it has um, gone in and um, finished out the process it did the rework, the rework is accepted, and then it updates it, the, the status to it. Okay. So that's really it, you know, in, in kind of a high level, quick and dirty um, example of taking something from CRM, moving it into SharePoint, reviewing the information in SharePoint, and then having it update the status of the back again. Okay. So briefly, I'm just going to go in now and show you how, the, how that process and flow was created. And so here is um, the, the designer of K2 Appit. And notice that it's still kind of running in my SharePoint site. And it, it's pretty intuitive and it's very easy to understand. Once you've had a little bit of training, you can start to build you know, pretty simple workflows, um, you know, literally within 15, 20 minutes of kind of understanding the UI and how things work. Uh, and then more complicated workflows after just a couple of hours of training, you can, you can build some pretty sophisticated stuff. Now, to get really sophisticated and connect to multiple systems, things like that, it's going to take you a little bit longer, particularly around connecting the multiple systems. Okay. And that's what we have here. So these are essentially, you can think of these as all the actionable information that's available to us. Okay, so if I wanted to set some particular user tasks, so I can have smart form tasks, SharePoint tasks, or I can create my own tasks. And if I wanted to, say, uh, add a particular task, to that stage of the process, and it's just simple drag and drop. What is this? Uh, let's just call this final approval. And then say uh, approve uh, or decline. Okay. And 
then if I want some additional information here that um, uh, I want to have separate um, actions for separate participants, I can do those things. We won't get into that in detail here, but now how do I want to display that information? Do I just want to pop it up or do I want to be able to edit it or just display it? And then now we can use the smart form tab to do this. And now who do I want to do that approval process? Do I want the originator to do that or do I want that person's manager to do that? Let's just drag and drop the manager over. And so now it looks at the higher structure set up in your um, SharePoint Active Directory and it'll push that to your manager in order to do that. Now notice that uh, another thing that we can do here, we can say notify the participants when they receive a work item. Okay. What that's going to do is that's going to send you an automated notification via email that there is a pending approval process waiting for you. Not only does it give you a link to that actual approval process, and, and, a, and I'm not going to demonstrate this at the moment, but I can literally just reply. If I already know that maybe that document's been reviewed or maybe um, you know, if we're fast tracking it and, and we don't need to do the standard uh, total processes, I can literally reply to that email approved and it will then trigger the next stage in that workflow. Okay, so I think that's very powerful in that you can now action workflow activity simply based upon replying to an email. Very powerful stuff. Okay. So once we finish that, What's the message that I want to um, to be sent to the user? And um, you know, in this case, we're just going to finish that out. And that's how simple it is to add an additional task. So let's say that you know what, maybe I want to now add a final task to update the CRM application. And so when I select CRM, I can create a new CRM record. I can update an existing record. I can delete a record, or I can get additional information about other records. So that's, let's just say that now we want to go in and update um, that final piece and or change it to another. So in this case, I changed it from a SharePoint workflow process um, to a CRM um, uh, process. And or any of these other things we can have um, as part of the process. And so in this case, if I just want to do some document management, I can upload documents, I can check them in, check them out, I can copy them, I can move them from one site to another site. A lot of very powerful capabilities built in here um, without, again, having to write a, a single line of code. Okay. So that kind of concludes the, 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 the quick and easy demonstration. I'm going to come back over and finish out our slide deck here uh, and then uh, open this up to questions. Okay. So let's uh, restart our workflow. Okay, so. Uh, and this, uh, again, so you can, you'll be able to download this document and kind of watch it through uh, the, the process that we did here, plus I give you a couple other examples. For example, we can um, establish that the, the workflow that we saw in SharePoint, we can actually expose that inside the CRM as well. You can either use a web resource or an iframe to be able to show the actual statuses. And so the green lines mean that's where it's come through. And then if I were to scroll down, I'd see a little bit more detail there. But here's where I was uh, mentioned about we can action information either um, uh, in web forms or even on smartphone devices. So since the web pages they display very easily inside of smart forms, uh, I'm sorry, smartphones and uh, tablet devices, uh, and there's also even a, a, a app itself that uh, for iPhone and Android currently in Windows Phone is is due any time now, uh, but. Here's where it kind of gives you another um, uh, overview of the power of the platform in that. You know, here is the information out of CRM. Uh, the top piece is a form. And this is a K2 app form uh, that is coming out of CRM information. I might then have maybe some invoice details for my accounting or ERP system. And then I might also have the SharePoint. So I can build a single view in, uh, in a K2 smart form or a combination of smart forms and SharePoint forms and expose that information from those different um, uh, systems. And then even then have those available um, and actionable on uh, devices. Okay. So that's it. Um, we can recommend the next step. You know, this was just a very quick, simple, high-level demonstration to kind of wet your whistle, so to speak. Um, we would be happy to do a personalized demo for you. And, and how we like to do that is you know, help us understand what our current challenge 
um, you know, workflow uh, scenario that you have. We might have something that we've already done and can show you something similar. Or we can use some of your data to perhaps incorporate that into a personalized demo. Okay. Also, uh, for all of the attendees today, uh, you uh, will be eligible for one month of APIT and onboard training for free. So if you sign up uh, before the end of the year, uh, you'll get your first additional month. They've already had a 30-day trial, but you will also get one additional month free of APIT. And then you will also get, uh, I think it's two days of onboard training for free as well. Okay, so that, that will really help you get up and running quickly, help you build some of those workflows, and really start getting um, uh, a, a lot of payback very quickly on the system. And so if you do want to take advantage of that offer, uh, go to our website and go to our contact us page and just put in the pro co promo code I want app it uh, down at the very bottom on how we can help you. Type that in, and uh, and we'll make sure that we uh, get you hooked up for the additional month uh, and the onboarding. And so, uh, with that, I'm going to just uh, open it up to any questions that we have. And uh, so, uh, at the moment, uh, and I guess maybe this came up because of the um, the question about the offer. Uh, how much is the pricing for K2 Avid? Uh, and uh, that's uh, one of the very attractive things uh, about the application that we feel. Um, you can get up and running on K2 for up to 100 users for $500 per month. Okay. So really a very low cost way to, uh, to have K, the power of K2 um, for just a simple $500 per month and for a total of up to 100 users. If you have more than 100 users, then it's just simply an additional $2 per month per individual. And how that how a user is defined is are they going to be a part of that workflow? Do they need to approve or decline workflow? Um, are they in any way involved in the workflow itself? Okay. And so um, that's the, um, the pricing information on that. Then there's another question here. Um, uh, if there isn't a connector built, can I um, connect to other systems? And uh, that's a common question, and the answer is yes. So uh, we have the ability to create custom connectors. So um, K2 Appit and K2, um, uh, the, the full version, K2 Smartphone to K2 Black Pearl, have a number of connectors to different systems. So SAP, they have a connector. Uh, to uh, AX, they have a connector. So uh, 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 quite a few different connectors. But let's just say that you've got an obscure accounting system, or maybe you've got a proprietary third-party type system. Um, we do have the ability to create a custom connector that then can be incorporated into the list of connections and line of business applications that you can then um, build connectors, connectors to in K2 app it for SharePoint. Okay, so that's a good question there. Um, and then uh, another question here, are there any big limitations to what we're seeing today? Uh, and, and I would say, I don't necessarily see it as a limitation, but the one thing to definitely keep in mind is K2 Appit for SharePoint is named that specifically for a reason. It requires SharePoint in some fashion to run. Okay? It is running as an app inside of SharePoint, either on-premise or online, and what's happening is they're really kind of hosting the server and everything else in the Azure platform. So when you enable the, the, the Appit application, it's running in Azure, but you still have to have SharePoint in one of those in one of those ways in order to take advantage of K2 app for SharePoint. Okay. So that's really the the the, the only you know, I would say caveat that you have uh, with this particular application. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, that kind of runs us a little bit a little well, actually right on our targeted time. Uh, so if there are any other questions, uh, we'll follow up with those. And again, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Hope you found some value uh, in, in the presentation. And uh, we'd love to see you take us up on either one of or both of our offers. And um, have uh, a great afternoon for the rest of the day. Thank you all, and appreciate you joining.